What happens when a painter who dedicated his life to making strange and illogical images takes on the realm of nuclear physics? Well, you get atomic painting, add Catholicism, mysticism, and theatricality, and you get crucifixion, corpus hypercubis, Salvador Dali's ambitious 1954 journey into another dimension. Like millions around the globe, Dali's world changed when the atomic bomb was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima on August 6th, 1945. Overnight, the world was made aware of atomic energy. Along with unleashing awesome and terrible power, the discoveries of physicists in the 20th century exploded the way we understood the basic laws of the universe held since Isaac Newton. They peeled back new layers of reality, discovered new forces that animate our universe. According to Albert Einstein, time was now relative and a component of something called space-time. Matter, a la quantum mechanics, was plagued by uncertainty. For Salvador Dali, nuclear science revealed a mysterious world. The atomic age, in fact, ushered in a new era of painting for Dali. His new philosophy was called nuclear mysticism. He had this to say of his new approach to painting. The explosion of the atom bomb on August 6, 1945 sent a seismic shock through me. Since then, the atom has been central to my thinking. Many of the scenes I have painted in this period express the immense fear that took hold of me when I heard of the explosion of the bomb. I want to perceive and understand the hidden powers and laws of things in order to have them in my power. A brilliant inspiration shows me that I have an unusual weapon at my disposal to help me penetrate to the core of reality. Mysticism. Dolly was taken with the atom. He seemed especially fixated on the space within the atom. Objects in Dali's paintings during this period levitate, fragment, and disintegrate. Objects do not touch but are suspended by a seemingly hidden force. Dali called this effect floating space. Dali said that matter was in a constant and accelerated process of dematerialization and disintegration, slipping out of the hands of scientists and thus proving to us the spirituality of all substance. For Dali, God or divinity existed within the space of the atom. Even still objects had energy and were in motion. Dali, the new mystic, claimed he was abandoning surrealism, the influential avant-garde art movement that made him famous, abandoning the inner world of dreams and the subconscious. Sigmund Freud, who was an almost godlike figure for Dali and the surrealists, fell out of favor. Dali argued that, in the nuclear age, physics had transcended psychology. He said, Today my father is Dr. Heisenberg, referring to the famous theoretical physicist Werner Heisenberg. This was a big deal for someone who had nearly single-handedly brought surrealism to the mainstream. Nothing is more gay than the collision and explosion of intra-atomic conflicts of nuclear physics. You feel that that really livens things up enormously. For me, it's the more happy thing is look at these terrific conflicts about electrons and pinesons and atoms is everything jumping and rumping in a completely extraordinary eurythmic feeling. So really, those that represented a phase in your career, those jokes that we all knew about, now you move on and all your life will be to the rhythm of atomic explosion. Exactly, one new kind of uh, atomic and nuclear mysticism. In 1949, Dali was given a private audience with Pope Pius XII. Dali asked for and received the Pope's blessing. Dali announced his conversion to Catholicism the next year, although he called himself a Catholic without faith. Por las matemáticas y por las ciencias particulares, sé que es indiscutible que Dios tiene que existir, pero no me lo creo. And so Dali was driven toward spirituality and Catholicism by his fascination with math and science, reading everyone from Luca Pacioli, a Renaissance-era mathematician, to Arthur Eddington, Albert Einstein, and Enrico Fermi. Dali felt that his intuitive, creative powers made him especially equipped to explore the mysteries of the universe and to reconcile science and religion, similar to the way science and religion were fused in the Renaissance. Dali described himself as a true religious mystic and wanted to paint beautiful images depicting spiritual ecstasy. This was also a big deal as Dali had put considerable effort into attacking the church and making blasphemous art throughout his career. 
Dolly's personal secretary, Robert Ducharme, wrote in 1953, when Dolly was in Le Havre, disembarking on a ship to New York, that Dolly announced to reporters gathered around him that he was going to paint a picture which he himself termed as sensational, an exploding Christ, nuclear and hypercubic. He said it would be the first picture painted with a classical technique and an academic formula, but actually composed of cubic elements. To a reporter who asked him why he wanted to depict Christ exploding, he replied, I don't know yet. First I have ideas. I explain them later. This picture will be the great metaphysical work of my summer. This picture would become Corpus Hypercubus. Dolly depicts an unblemished Christ levitating in front of a floating geometric cross. Christ's face is turned away, yet the expression of the figure is somewhere between anguish and ecstasy. Dali felt he was working in line with Spanish mystics like St. Teresa of Avila, who professed visions of religious ecstasy. Below Christ is a portrait of Dali's wife Gala, who, like Mary Magdalene, witnesses Jesus on the cross. Dali used Gala in many religious paintings to portray mythological figures, saints, and the Virgin Mary. At this point, Dali was treating Gala as a noble, essentially divine figure. In the distance lies Port Egat, the small village where Dali spent much of his life, and the landscape used in so many of Dali's most famous paintings. The black and white squares echo Vermeer, but also suggest an unearthly realm. A two-dimensional projection of the cross can be seen in the black tiles, acting like a shadow of the geometric structure. Dali said the cross is formed by an octahedral hypercube, also known as a tesseract. A hypercube is a four-dimensional cube, represented here as a cube within a cube. Dali created his hypercubic cross using an exploded or unfolded form of the hypercube. The cross contains eight cubes, and as Dali explained, the body of Christ forms a kind of ninth cube, an idea that came from the 16th century Spanish architect Juan de Herrera, the number nine being, among other things, the hour of Jesus' death. Dali saw the hypercubic crucifixion as an object that represented the intersection of science and spirituality. Adding a fourth dimension to the cross can be seen as adding an ungraspable, transcendent layer to the painting. A fourth dimension is something that cannot be visualized, except through an analogy like the hypercube. This, it seems, is how Dali viewed fundamental elements of nuclear science and divinity as transcending the perceptions and understanding of human beings. And Dali wasn't humble about his contributions to painting or metaphysics. He said, My ideas were ingenious and abundant. I decided to turn my attention to the pictorial solution of quantum theory and invented quantum realism in order to master gravity. I painted Lita Atomica, a celebration of Gala, the goddess of my metaphysics, and succeeded in creating floating space. I visually dematerialized matter, then I spiritualized it in order to create energy in my paintings. I have succeeded in giving space substance. Now thinking about Dali's nuclear mysticism in the greater context of the Cold War can be pretty interesting. The atom wasn't just on Dali's mind, it was on everyone's mind. The fear of nuclear annihilation loomed large. It seemed like scientists were playing God, splitting atoms, toying with the very fabric of the universe. The inventors of the atomic bomb working in Los Alamos once feared they might set the atmosphere on fire and incinerate the entire planet. Robert Oppenheimer, the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, was ordered to Hindu scripture to come to terms with his role in unlocking Pandora's box. The scientific discoveries of the 20th century were existential. Atomic weapons had no limit to their power. Dali's nuclear painting attempted to wrestle with all the fears, mysteries, and possibilities of nuclear science. Dali called himself the first painter of the atomic age, and called all his previous work merely evolution. But of course, not everyone liked Dali's new direction. Not everyone liked the new Dali, the Catholic, the Spanish mystic. The Surrealists ridiculed Dali. George Orwell ruled Dali's Catholic conversion hollow. While some critics thought Dali's religious paintings were great, many more called them religious kitsch, likened them to scenes from Hollywood movies. The new Dali certainly didn't fit into a box, but really, neither did the old one. Even after becoming a Catholic, Dali simultaneously called himself an agnostic. Dali explained this contradiction by telling the story of his older brother, also named Salvador, who died before he was born. 
The younger Salvador wore his older brother's clothes, played with his toys, and in a sense was expected to be his older brother. Dolly felt like he was the reincarnation of his older brother, like he was two people, embodying life and death. Dolly's mother was a Catholic, his father was an atheist, so clearly Dolly was instilled with some identity issues and conflict from an early age. Possibly the most unlikely thing a modern painter could do in the 1950s, when abstract artists like Jackson Pollock were all the rage, was to make religious paintings using old master techniques. Dolly condemned modern painters as empty, faithless, and decadent, and saw the Renaissance as the height of artistic expression. Dolly claimed his parents named him Salvador because he was the chosen one who had come to save painting from the menace of abstract art, surrealism, and Dadaism, and any other kind of ism. He even called for all modern artists to return to religious subject matter and classically inspired aesthetics while incorporating the discoveries of modern art, a completely improbable notion. Yet this is exactly what Dolly is attempting to do with Corpus Hypercubus. He uses this very traditional, religious subject matter, the crucifixion, and reimagines it for the modern, nuclear age, attempts to combine a mystical Christ with the mysteries of nuclear science in the fourth dimension. For an ex-surrealist, it's the most surreal crucifixion ever painted. Blood. Symbolic blood. Dolly's eccentric public persona was such that he had to constantly remind people that he was not in fact mad. By the time Dolly had entered his nuclear mysticism phase, much of the world had a hard time taking him seriously. He had started referring to himself in the third person, sometimes as the divine Dolly. He monetized his reputation as an eccentric, and at one point declared his pure, vertical, mystical, gothic love of cash. Surrealist Max Ernst called Dolly a racketeer of surrealism. The founder of surrealism, André Breton, gave Dali a derogatory nickname, Avida Dollars, an anagram of Salvador Dali. Even by the 1930s, Dali had been excommunicated by the surrealists for counter-revolutionary activity involving the celebration of fascism under Hitler. Dali's The Enigma of Hitler, painted in 1939, was particularly problematic for the surrealists. Applying any kind of mystique to Hitler at this point was beyond the pale. It's hard to know how to take Dali's self-professed fascination with Hitler, given his history of conflicting statements and his compulsive creative process. And Dali did defend himself by saying his fascination with Hitler was not an endorsement and was apolitical. Dali's support for Spanish dictator Francisco Franco, however, was clear-cut. Dali referred to Franco as the greatest hero of Spain and approved of Franco's alliance with Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. Dali received the Cross of Isabel the Catholic, the high civil order from Franco in 1964. No matter how serious Dali was about nuclear mysticism and religious painting, and he was quite serious, many couldn't get past Dali the man. His eccentricity, his egotism, his moral ambivalence to the Spanish Civil War, to World War II and the rise of fascism. During the same period that he was painting crucifixions and the Last Supper, he was also painting Young Virgin, auto-sodomized by the horns of her own chastity. Dali could be outrageous, charming, pompous, and self-deprecating all in the same breath. Part of what made Dali a fascinating painter, a great surrealist, and a moral quagmire was his complete lack of a filter, his complete boundlessness. He painted his impulses, obsessions, and deepest fears in painstaking detail. Dali famously said that at age seven, he wanted to be Napoleon. In 1955, he told Mike Wallace, in a 60 Minutes interview, that he now finds joy in every day becoming a little more Dali. Dali.